Welcome to The Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me, and thank you for doing that. And for today's Daily Word, we're going to go into Matthew chapter 20. And I'll tell you, if, if you think about it, this is sort of a, of a humorous scene. James and John, who Jesus nicknames the Sons of Thunder, which, you know, calls to mind like professional wrestlers or something, like, you know, these real tough guys, they, um, it seems go with their mom, put their mom up to it. Maybe their mom makes them do it. I don't know, but they go to Jesus and they want like top positions in Jesus' administration that when he comes into the kingdom that they, they'd be like, you know, chief of staff, vice president, um, you know, secretary of state, whatever. They're, they're, they want to be in top, top positions. And Jesus knows, of course, they, they, don't, they don't even begin at this point to comprehend what that means. Can you actually drink of the cup of suffering that I'm going to drink of? Jesus asked them. And of course, yes, of course we can do whatever, Jesus. And, <laughs> and they just, they don't get it. And then, just to kind of add to how weird that scene is, the other disciples overhear this little conversation and understand that they're trying to get first in line for those top positions and they get mad about that um, it, because they don't want to be left behind if, if Jesus is handing out the top positions they don't want to be you know left out they don't want to be on down the line and and this does as ridiculous as that whole scene is it, it does open this door for Jesus to, to really teach them about life in the kingdom of God, life as a follower of Jesus. That, you know, in the world, people value uh, power over people uh, really more than lots of things. Some people, it's like the top thing to have power, to have power over somebody. That it's not like that in the kingdom of God. It's not like that for the followers of Jesus. And, and so I invite you to pick up with me at verse 26, but among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. For even the son of man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. So a couple observations, one, is that arrogance or this desire to be over people, to put ourselves over people, to lord our position over people, it, it's really gross. I mean, honestly, it's really gross. And that, that, whole, that whole thing of, of arrogance just repulses us. And it's not just, you know, the disciples here have a little bit of, hey, no, no, I want to be in power. It's not just, I want to be in power instead of that person. There, there is something about, uh, about this that is morally repugnant. When someone lords their position over someone, when someone considers themselves better than other people, there is something morally repugnant about that arrogance, about that self-aggrandizement, about that, that uh, elevation of the self above others. And, and so um, let's, let's say that and then add to that the fact that we positively admire those who are humble, who are self-sacrificing, who are selfless and kind. Um, and, it, and it's the same reason, the same reason that we find arrogance morally repugnant is the same reason that we find humility and generosity and a servant heart to be morally beautiful. And the reason is that we are made by God. And we are made in the, in the image of God. So we are made by God the Father um, through the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ. Jesus is um, we could say the, the designer, if you like. He is the Word of God 
uh, the Logos, the divine Logos, the ordering principle of the universe. He, he wrote our DNA. He created us. And, and so we are made by him. But not only that, we are made in him, his image. And so when he comes into the world, when Jesus comes, the Son of God made flesh, um, he is, I mean, honestly, he is the one who is actually worthy of standing above everyone else, of, of being honored, of being served. He is the one who's truly worthy of that, the only one who is. And yet, as he says, even, and that's why he says, even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. So when he comes into the world, this is what we see. This is the image of God in which we're created. And we find then, and this explains a lot of why not only is servanthood, is humility, is selflessness morally beautiful, but it is also um, the way to a life of, uh, of thriving, of joy. It, it's been, been shown that people who serve, people who are generous, are just happier. And, and of course, there, there's a bit of, of a reciprocal effect, right? It's not just that happy people are generous, it's that f- folks who are generous, it, it generates happiness and that joy actually encourages and increases our generosity and our desire to serve and, and to lift others up the, it, it actually is, is who we are made to be. And so, of course, of course, as we're living out who we're made to be, our joy increases. And as others see it, it is morally beautiful to them because that's who we are made to be. And so may we live out the image of Christ. May we yield ourselves to the work of the Holy Spirit, transforming us more and more after the image of Christ. May it be so, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. And until we get a chance to speak again, may God bless you and keep you.